Blast me to Bermuda. It's time for Mad Merlin Builds. Hello and welcome to a Mad Merlin's building session. Today we're going to build a Warrior of Rohan, a Warrior of the Dead, a Moran and Orc, and we'll also build a Rider of Rohan. Before you get started, you'll need a few materials. You'll need fine detail cutters, a file, knife or mold line remover, your bases, and of course, plastic glue. We'll start things off with a Moran and Orc. If you've watched my review videos, you'll know all the Orcs are on plastic sprue. 12 to a sprue with three copies of the sprue on supply in the box. To remove the models from the frame, you'll need to use your fine detail cutters. You'll notice they have a flat side and a be slightly beveled side where the blade is to. Now, take the flat side and put it against the model and simply pinch. In a bit better. There we go, that's better. And simply pinch to separate the model from the frame. Work your way around each model. Until you're left with an orc. Next thing to do is to take your mold line remover or your knife. Always have an adult on, on hand for supervision. And we'll deal with removing the tabs left over on the model. Simply scrape your knife or mold line remover along, removing the tabs. You may find that some tabs are still left, in which case, give it a quick go over with your file. And likewise with the clipping, do this all the way around the model, wherever the tabs were. There. With the tabs cleaned up, the next thing you need to look for is mold lines. Mold lines are a remainder of where the two halves of the frame of the sprue were wedged together in the molding process. Simply lightly drag your knife or mold line remover along the lines to remove them. Luckily for some of these newer models, there aren't too many mold lines. Which makes cleaning up fairly easy. The older kits such as the Rohan Warriors and the Riders will have slightly more mold lines to them. One Orc Warrior cleaned up. Next we'll take one of the 25mm bases, some plastic glue, which will run along the tab on his bot on his legs. I'll also put a little bit 
on his feet where they touched the base to help secure them in place. On this side. Okay. And simply push the model into the base and let the glue set. Next we'll look at the Warriors of Rohan. There are two types of warrior. Shielded with weapons or bows. Now, the archers are going to be a simple one. They are all one piece. So, as before, we'll work around the model until it's removed from the frame. Bring in a knife and gently clean up the model. As I said before, these models are older and the mold lines will require a little bit more to get them all removed. Once you've worked your way around the model, you'll have yourself a completed archer. And like with the orc, Bit of glue along the tab. And place him onto his base. The second type of warrior of Rohan are the ones armed with various equipment and shields. These models are two pieces, obviously the shield and the main model. So we'll work our way around again. Putting a flat of the blade against the model and chopping away until the models are separated. The shields can be any model so we'll just pick off one at random with this nice star shape down here. And there we are. Never noticed the horse detail on the helmet on this one before. That's really nice. There we are.
Now we attach the shield. Put a small amount of glue along the rounded nub on the hand. This will be the center of the shield. And we simply press the shield over. Like so. And for the rest of the model, just as before, glue on the tab, and we push it into its base. And one warrior with shield. Last for the infantry is the Warriors of the Dead. There are 10 in the set. Two frames of 20 in total. Most models are either one or two pieces and they have the option of shields. Though there does not the set does not supply enough shields for every model, so pick and choose which ones have them. And again, we'll work our model free from the frame. Clean them up. How close I was to the camera then. Yeah, I think that's it. These models have nice actual footprint detail which helps to connect them to the base a lot stronger than some of the older models. Right, got enough classic glue on that. We'll push it down to the base. And there we have a warrior of the dead. Repeat this process for all the models in your set and you'll eventually have your fully built Pelennor Fields battle box. Final models to be built in the box set that we'll be covering are the Riders of Rohan. You get the sprue of riders and a sprue of horses. The bases they supply you with have pre-punctured holes. These are a little too large for the models we will be focusing on. They are designed for hexagram sized pegs from the starter sets for Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40,000. So luckily I have a good supply of the older 99, 1999 GW 40mm bases. The newer ones from 2021 no longer have these um, punchable holes so you will have to make sure you get the correct ones when you're purchasing them separately but first off we'll select the horse we're going to be building we'll go for the leaping horse 
Each horse has two halves plus a tuft of grass. A lot of people never use this, but for my video, I'm going to give you a top tip which utilizes this and makes them a lot more stable. Uh, each horse is connected to the frame in two locations. And the grass tuft is just in one location. So with your base upside down, Take your horse and temporarily slot it together. You then need to locate the two holes that will be the ideal length of width apart. The back peg and the closest front opposite hoof. Mark those holes with your knife. And then on the other side, you can focus on making the holes. It's a good idea to test fit every so often, just to make sure you're not making a hole too large. There we are, perfect. Repeat that process till you have both holes made. Tiny bit more. Perfect. Well, we've got our hobby knife out. Let's clean up our horse. So split it. Clean up the tabs and any mold lines. The worst mould lines of these will be along the feet. You need to do the front and the back of each leg. Make sure they're nice and clean as well as the back of the hoof. One half, we'll do the grass tuft, which is just cleaning up along the peg. There. And then the second half of the horse.
get the halves of our horse cleaned up. We're now glued them together. So, as before, line up the holes and the pegs, push them together and squeeze gently but firmly, sandwiching the two halves of the horse together. While that's drying, we will glue our grass tuft to the base, if I don't lose it. Now for this horse, we want to make sure that the grass is blowing away from it. With the other horse design, we want to make sure that the grass is blowing away from the horse. In the reverse, or towards the horse, should I say. Just do dry fit to make sure it's in the right place. And yes, as you can see, the hoof will rest on the grass blades nicely. That'll make it a little bit more stable for playing your games of Lord of the Rings. Give another base a while to dry, and now I perfectly ready for constructing the horse. I have also cleaned up the join line underneath. Now make sure we put a small amount of glue on the hoof as well as on the V of the blade of grass. And then we can do the final construction of the horse, back peg into the base and front foot into the V and the blade of grass. And there. That will make your horses a lot more stable than their initial design. In fact, the newer Gondor riders have a similar design where they have grass attached to the feet and one foot on the ground so it has a little bit more of a footprint on the base to make it more stable. Well, that's drying. We'll pick out a rider. And a shield. There we go. I built and cleaned up the rider off camera as there was a fair amount of mold lines in doing. Final assembly for your riders is to take the peg, push it into the hole on the back of the horse. And with that, you have one of your 12 riders of Rohan ready to charge the orc lines.
So that's how you can build the models within the Battle of Pelennor Fields for the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth Battle Strategy Battle Game. And how to make them a little bit more stable so that they don't snap off as they more commonly do. Another top tip, always leave your rider separate until you finish painting. That way you can get both sides of the cloth on the rider. And you get the saddle detail as well as the back of the horse done. Of course, you can always leave them loose so that in game you can have dismounted horse and rider. And then put them back on and he hops back on the horse. So I hope you found this useful when you build your Battle of Pelennor Fields box game from Games Workshop's Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game range. And that, that's all I was to say. I'm Merlin, I'm quite mad about painting, and thank you for watching. Please click the links in my video description for Curton Games, as well as links to my social media, where you'll see more progress on this box set. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.